Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, I am back and I'm bringing you guys a review today of the Aris uh, Gigabyte's high-end line of GPUs, kind of branding their base 1080 Ti 11 gigabyte edition. And this thing is a three slot cooler. It has copper uh, plating basically that the GPU sits on as well as the RAM and uh, should be a phenomenal uh, cooler for, like I say, the GPU as well as the memory on this card. So looking forward to seeing what this thing can do. And I'm about to show you guys what it can do in this video. Before we get to that though, I did want to mention one thing. I, uh, and I have one thing to admit to you guys. I actually RMA'd my initial motherboard, the Asus Crosshair Hero 6 AM4 motherboard, as well as my initial Ryzen R7 1700 CPU because I was having some uh, stability issues. And at the time, you know, the BIOS was still kind of in its infancy. So there were some issues there with RAM compatibility, which you guys saw in my previous videos. Uh, I've already gone through, you know, two RAM kits before I found one that worked extremely well, which again is the G-Skill Flare X, which is designed for AM platforms and Ryzen CPUs specifically, which works great. But I was unable to get my old 980 Ti. It was a Zotac Extreme Amp Edition, and that card drew a ton of power, like almost 400 watts of power. Uh, Maxwell was not as efficient as uh, Pascal, so drew a ton of power, and it had two 8-pin power connectors going to it. Maybe it was one 8-pin, one 6-pin, but it had a lot of power being pulled from the PSU, uh, as well as 75 watts coming off of the rail, obviously. And I could not get the system to even post using that GPU. And at the time, you know, my eyes were so bad anyway that I couldn't really game. So I just sold that GPU and ended up using a couple of old Frankenstein. Um, this one didn't have a fan in it, for God's sakes. But this is a, like a 512 megabyte uh, GPU I could run two monitors off of, an old NVIDIA 9500 or something. Uh, which actually, that was causing me instability problems, or stability problems rather, uh, when I had that card in the system. And uh, I don't know why, but that card is, uh, you know, it, it boots up and it works fine and all of a sudden it just will crash. So that was some of my issues coming from that card. <clears throat> so I ended up putting this 128 megabyte beast, the uh, GeForce 7300 LE, I believe, with like, uh, you know, a massive one digital output there. It's got the uh, DVI, dual link DVI. I could run one monitor 1080p um, and of course no gaming with this but um, I don't know if you'd want to for God's sakes. But anyway, um, to get this card to work, um, and it would have worked for the 980 Ti as well, on the Asus Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard, that board has two um, EATX 12 volt plugins for the CPU in addition to you know the regular run-of-the-mill 24 pin uh, just kind of the block motherboard power that you know comes out of every power supply um, and most of the time you really shouldn't need to plug in that additional 4 pin power connector for the CPU the 8 pin should be sufficient especially with the 1700 on 65 watts and rising being uh, you know a very efficient CPU anyway um, doesn't t doesn't pull a ton of power but um, to get this card to post and like I say it would have worked for the 980 Ti as well I'm sure um, I had to connect that additional four pin power connector for the CPU and whether that was due to some kind of um, you know power variance because the the card was drawing more power etc I don't really have any way of testing that. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up though. If you're if you're having issues getting your system to post and you have an Asus Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard and you have a GPU that requires additional external power from your uh, power supply, you know, on top of the 75 watts coming off of the rail, which most of you I'm sure will if you're buying this kind of system, um, try that. Try and plug in the uh, additional four pen power connector for your CPU. And in my case, that helped right away. I called ASUS tech support, the guy had no friggin' clue. He just said, oh, your system's broken. Well, I'm like, you know, thanks a lot. But um, anyway, I was able to figure that out, thank God, and get a system up and going and benchmarking for you guys. So 
This card, spoiler alert, is a beast. The uh, the new name I have for my computer, I was going to call it Red Leader, you know, kind of like a Star Wars AMD reference or whatever, but uh, the new uh, name I've given my, my computer is the Honey Badger because <laughs> this computer with 8 cores, 16 threads, about 4 gigahertz, you know, the RAM at 3467 with 16 cast timings, uh, great memory bandwidth there with this card and the Samsung Evo 960. Um, which is running a lot better than did on, did on, did on my uh, uh, Z170 platform. I'm getting almost double the bandwidth. I'm getting actually um, the full, you know, 3.2 gigahertz uh, reads. And I think it's like 1.7 gigabytes a second write speeds um, uh, off of that, uh, that, that uh, NVMe M.2 SSD. So that's actually gotten a lot better, um, you know, from my Intel system in terms of performance. Moving over to Ryzen, for whatever reason, um, you know, I had all the drivers installed last time properly as well, and it just works a whole lot better on the Ryzen platform. But anyway, with all those things combined, the new name for this thing is the Honey Badger because it just doesn't give a shit what kind of workload you're throwing at it, whether it is, you know, a CPU intensive task, whether it's memory intensive whether it is, you know, IOPS, you know, input-output intensive on the primary, you know, SSD, or whether it has to do anything to do at all with the GPU in terms of pixel and polygon throughput, uh, you know, shading abilities, you know, coming off of the cores of the GPU, or anything to do with, you know, memory on the GPU. The memory bandwidth on here and the color compression technology, the texture compression technology, is really exceptional and I can even push the memory bandwidth on this up and above uh, the standard HBM2 to be coming with the Vega cards uh, hopefully very soon and that is just phenomenal for any of you guys doing high resolution gaming in particular the memory bandwidth really does come into play um, you know you want to have a balance there being able to push the pixels and you know shade the pixels and light the pixels and push the polygons etc along with being able to, you know, um, <clears throat> push all the textures and the, and the stuff through memory. And especially if you're using memory bandwidth hungry effects, such as like multi-sampling, um, you know, anti-aliasing, which looks phenomenal, makes the image super, super clean. Um, or again, one of those high resolutions, the memory bandwidth can, come up, can go a long way uh, in terms of helping out your frame rates and overall performance. So anyway, um, with that out of the way, let us get on to the numbers and let you guys see what the Honey Badger back here can do uh, as far as gaming is concerned. I couldn't do a whole lot of tests. Most of this stuff is closed loop benchmarks, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. So um, yeah, other than that guys, enjoy the video, enjoy the uh, numbers coming up here. Peace out and I will see you in the next one.
So that about wraps it up, guys, for the Aorus 1080 Ti review. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the benchmarks and seeing some games on this badass card. Tons of options on this baby for outputs, whether you're doing multiple displays or VR through the front or the back of your system. Both options are great. Phenomenal cooling for the GPU and the VRAM. So this card is an absolute monster and it adds a ton to the new Honey Badger system. Glad you guys checked out the video. Appreciate it as always. Keep on kicking ass. Keep on gaming. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.